Today on Ask EMBN, we're talking bypasses, towing, longer or shorter, depreciation. And of course, appreciation, everything e-mountain bikes. Let's get into it. And straight in with our bypass story. And we're not talking about ring roads or motorways. This is from Ireland Aerial. Have you tried speed limiter bypasses? If yes, which are the best? Thanks. Uh, well, Island Ariel, uh, I have not. You Chris. Wouldn't, you wouldn't know anything about it, Steve, because you're such a good boy. A good lad. But yeah, de-restricting, it depends obviously on what bike and what motor you're gonna do it to. Um, a lot of the systems, it just means that it basically halves the speed or the readout. So you're gonna lose your speedo readout, you're gonna lose your range as well. It's gonna be all over the place. So if you're de-restricting that e-bike, it's quite a, a bigger thing than what you think. It just make it go faster. You're actually gonna mess with that whole diagnostics on that e-bike. There are some that you can get that which you can turn on and off. So it's up to you if you wanna use it and when you wanna use it. They're probably the better ones if you are gonna do that route. But obviously remember, you're gonna affect things like your manufacturer's warranty, it's totally illegal on like roads and things like that. So just make sure you're off-road, private land, and you can ride it de-restricted. But, but Chris, come on. Things. But Chris, if you want to hit some 70 foot booters, if you mm -hmm. want to drive down the autobahn at 70 mile an hour, yeah. it's the perfect place, right? Definitely, yeah. Get it moving on, moving on to Jack Hell. Uh, Jack, uh, first I want to thank you for your awesome work. Well, thank you very much. I would like to know what you guys are thinking of pulling uh, a no pulling a normal bike with an e-bike. In the area where I live, all the bike parks are closed. Yeah, I can imagine that, such as the Alps or Andorra. But my girlfriend has a specialized Levo. Could she pull me up or would that be too much for the motor? For attention, for your information, I am 100 kilos with bike and gear. All the best from Vienna, Austria. Absolutely, no problem with that. Do you know what? We've done it on many occasions. When we did our first uh, recent trip to uh, to Italy, we, we were out all day and, and a couple of us ran out of battery and um, with bags and all of spare stuff, I was probably running about 100 kilos mm. and I got, I got um, uh, Jack the film to tow me up one of the last ascents. And I, I see it, I see it everywhere. We yeah. did a trip from uh, Zermatt to Verbier once where we got probably three quarters of the way and uh, relied on some of us pushing each other, towing each other. I think the good thing is when you've got two people towing and one push person pushing and it kind of lightens the load. But yeah, you can still do it. Um, yeah, or well, how about sharing the love and let your girlfriend sit on the back and you do all the hard work. Exactly. Prepared. You get on the e-bike and get your girlfriend on the manual bike. Job done. Right there. Chris, what's next? Muted monkey. Yeah, muted monkey. Oh, a regular visitor. Yeah, guys, regular visitor. Guys, have you ever tried shorter cranks? I have them and they are honestly one of the best upgrades. E bikes change the way you ride uphill. We constantly turn the crank to climb up hills as we now climb steep hills than ever done on normal bikes. If we stop pedaling, the bike stalls and there's a pain to regain cadence. Therefore, shorter cranks are a godsend. Also, when racing around single track and bike parks, shorter cranks allow me to pedal through the corners, therefore, keeping speed. You've got to try it. I think you've got a point there actually because um, last week I was with Blake riding down an Avon and I was actually because because when you're on a on a bike which is heavier like 20 20 odd kilos and it's particularly if you're riding against someone who's on a manual bike then because you're if you're on flatter ground you've actually got to push a lot more than someone who's maybe on a manual bike and in, in the case of Blake he's on a manual bike with harder compound tires and higher pressure tires so yeah, I, I can see the benefits in that actually, mm. but when it comes to hill climbing, um, I I like I like the the vibe of a 165, 170 mm. crank. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's all that important thing of we talked about before: looking ahead, planning your ride, looking about where momentum's going to carry you, and think about where you need to put that power down. It's all part of that climb for me. I enjoy like picking it apart and looking at how I'm going to make my way yeah. up there without clouting my pedals. I, I'd say I'd say it's a, a good point, but um, I think you know it's, there's there's pros and cons. I'd like of to all try them. I, you know, I, I can put my hand up and say I haven't ridden them myself. Yeah, so I, I think there's pros and cons of it. Yeah, yes and no. Got this one in from Average Joe. Question for next week's show, depreciation on e-bikes. I tried my first e-bike on Thursday, loved it. I know my current bike will hold its value quite well if I maintain it, whereas anything with tech every year sees huge leaps in technologies, especially where batteries and motors are concerned. The old stuff devalues very quickly as a result. Do you see this being a problem over the next two to five years? Will a 2018 Kinevo be worth as much as its component part come 2010, 2020? Uh, yeah, you say huge leaps in technology. I, mm. I don't think the leaps are that huge. No. Um, 
And it, it comes it comes back to all these things. You know, everyone thinks, yeah, you need to have more power. But yeah, as I proved with the Shimano E7000, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of the more cost-effective motors. It, it, it can still do some ridiculous stuff. Yeah. Um, I think you'll still have fun on a Kinevo in mm. 2020, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think if it was like massively back when the first e-bikes came out, say sort of five, six years ago, then it might be a slight difference in 2020. But if you're only talking a couple of years, I see them being pretty similar sort of value of second-hand market. Yeah, when it comes to replacing your motor, don't forget that Specialized offer a replacement motor package, which is pretty pretty competitive, to be honest with you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think I, I, I wouldn't worry about it to be honest. Yeah, I really, really wouldn't worry about it too much. You got this one in from Mr. Themney. Uh, which front light can I connect to my Shimano E8000? And are there any front lights that use this Shimano E tube connector from the display? So you're talking about a Shimano Di2 connector. Had a quick look round, quite thin on the ground, but a company called Lupine do some lights that will connect to that Shimano system and work off that Di2 display panel. You control it on and off from there as well. But that looks like the only company that's offering that at the minute. Or you can have that reversing light, which we showed a few weeks ago, uh, which could. is about five pound off eBay. Don't know if that connects. Uh, is that Di2 connected? It doesn't or? connect, does it? No. But I like the, I like your idea that you're going to be running one light mm. off your handlebars. But I think that's all you actually need. Uh, on, on, on any mountain bike, because when you've got uh, your handlebar going in that direction and you, you, you don't always you light on your helmet, I think it's, yeah, I think one light is all you need. Big topic, we need to talk about that another time. We've got this one in from Alexander Irwin. Any possibility of a review of entry level mid drive mountain bikes such as Cube, Giant, High Bike, etc.? Well, no, because we don't do reviews. What we try to do is give you as much information as possible so you can make an informed decision. Um, what well, I can say though, the Cube the cube is a great entry level bike and so too is the high bike. So you're looking at about 1500 pounds and as long as you've got a mid drive motor, you're gonna be getting a hardtail. That's, you'd be surprised how capable a mid drive bike is compared to say a, a hub drive. So uh, you're definitely on the right lines by getting that mid drive motor. Got this one in from Garen Jones. Hi guys, I have a Bafang BBS 02 on my hardtail Halford's cheap bike. It's ridden the South Downs uh, twice on it. I'm thinking of moving the kit to a full suspension mountain bike. I only have about £1,500 to play with. Haven't looked around, I can't see many bikes that will accommodate the kit. It needs a 68 to 73 mm, uh, millimeter BSA mm. bottom bracket. 2018 Vitus Escape VR or a Boardman MTR 8.9. Are there any other bikes you could recommend me to take a look yeah. at? Yeah, do you know what, Garen? I uh, actually met a great character in the Forest of Dean recently and he had a 2018 Vitus Escape with a Bafang motor fitted to it and it was a really, really good combination. So, uh, yeah, it seemed to be, he didn't seem to have any problems with it. So, I think the only thing would possibly be the fact you go from hardtail to full suspension, you need to bear in mind the ground clearance when you fit in a mid-drive bike to your e-bike. So, I mean, yes, you could you could change the geometry in it, but that's going to compromise the handling, such as cornering mm -hmm. uh, and your stability at high speed. But um, yeah, I think you I think in in general, moving from a hardtail up to a full suspension bike is going to give you far more possibilities in terms of climbing technical terrain in terms of grip, in terms of riding over roots and rocks. I think this is a good move, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, we've got this one from Cliff Tools. Ask EMBN, thinking of getting an e-bike to save money on uplift, and how many runs would I be able to get in? My track is about two minutes long. Yeah, well, it depends. Two minutes could be like a gradient like that, mm -hmm. could be a gradient like that. How I fast think, do you ride the track? Yeah, well, do you know what? I think you can get about 3,000 foot mm -hmm. of climbing in yeah, in a day. Like that, yeah, yeah. And finally, this is in from OBC. Uh, how to go faster after the assist cuts out? That is the question that OBC is asking. I have a high bike Enduro Pro, 180 mil with a Bosch running a 16 to the front. I cannot pedal above about 21 mile an hour. On a fast flowy downhill trail, I'm always 10 to 15 seconds slower than on my non e-bike. So uh, I can see that your question goes on in, in depth, but I think we get the gist of the question there. Um, this is funny, it depends, you know, back in January, I actually did a video which was the high bike 180 mil travel uh, versus a Canyon uh, Sender downhill bike. And I was actually five seconds quicker on the e-bike than I was on the downhill bike. So I think this really does depend on the trail you ride. Now, mm. uh, only last week I did a video with Blake and Blake was on a, um, a Newproof Mega 170 mil front and rear. 
and uh, he had different tires on. So he had like a, on a harder compound tire front and back with more air pressure in them. Now on, on the tracks which are like that, there is no doubt that you have to pedal more on an e-bike simply because you've got more weight and less gravity to take you down the hill. Mm. So I don't think you can make a generalization on on the kind of on the fit on, on, on the on the speed. Um, I'd imagine it might be slower in some places and be faster in other places. Mm -hmm. So um, and with the drag as well, I think as good as a Bosch motor is in a lot of uh, places on e-bike riding, it does have that restriction when you pedal above that uh, mm -hmm. 60 mile an hour is a harder motor to turn over purely from yeah. its design. It's great in lots of other ways, but unfortunately it's one of those yeah. motors where the decoupling isn't as good. Yeah. It's like the Bros, the Yamaha, Shimano, things like that, where you can exceed that limit fairly easy. Mm -hmm. But it's a very powerful, very reliable motor. I think I think to answer your question is maybe maybe change the type of trails you're riding mm -hmm. or maybe try to ride steeper trails. Right, okay, that's it for EM, Ask EMBN this week. Thanks for uh, putting your questions and thanks for your feedback actually as well to some of the uh, questions we've been trying to answer and maybe failed to answer them in detail. It's good to have everyone else's input here. Like, you know, it's, it's a two-way thing, right, Chris? Yeah, if you've got any more questions you want to ask us for next week's show, don't forget to drop them below, hashtag Ask EMBN. Mm. We'll get back to you next week or the week after that. Love it, um, absolutely love forget, it. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN. Drop some comments in the box below, and we'll see you next week.